Thank you all for attending. This session is on instructor presence, and I define instructor presence as the circumstances by which your students feel, hear, and see you. In the asynchronous section, it's very hard to develop that sensation that the student feels that you're there and they don't see you, they don't see their peers. So what can you do in your course to maximize this sense that you're there, you're seen, you're heard? It allays anxieties, I think, when you have a consistent form to your course, there's responsiveness all around. And I tend to look at this really through a lens of customer service. So what do you do to ensure that your students are all right, they're not anxious, and they're set up for success in your course? That's basically what the goal of instructor presence is all about. So I start first, and I will just share my course because the first point really does focus on, on a very important component of the course, and it's really about interior course design. Is your course set up? Does it look appropriate? Are the things there that students are expecting to see. Do you want to go through the course as you prepare to be sure that your syllabus is there, that the navigation looks right, the links are right, that it's worthwhile taking a moment just to check everything here. In my course, I have an instructor profile. So I put my picture up there, a little synopsis of who I am. Um, I haven't had a chance this term to put up the syllabus. I'm still revising a little bit. And I illustrate this here because it's always good to not only upload your syllabus, but to also include a last revise. So you want to be sure that your version is current. So it's really a good idea to date that. And also you can annotate these content blocks. So let's say if you want to just put your syllabus of any content item, you have all this space here to put in some terms about things to focus on the syllabus. If there's something specific, if you don't need it, then you can ignore it. But you have this space here that you can use for annotation to help the student know something about the syllabus if that is necessary. Um, I organize my course by weekly materials, so I have subfolders. I don't jam pack it with a list of materials just up front. It's organized into nice, neat folders. You have to have this edit mode on, but you can use the edit function to also annotate the subfolders to give some students a snapshot of what's underneath those folders. You can do that too, but I would not fill this up too long because what happens in this space between the folders become very large and optically, it just seems to be too much and underneath. I have task tables and I have all the videos of edit and so forth. So they're ready to go link to the journal articles as well. For journal articles that have historically been a problem in my course, I just append the PDF here. So you can just do the edit and then eventually you'll find a place to attach the actual file itself. Yeah. So in my course too, I also add these sample individual projects. So for the years, if there are projects that I like to use as exemplars, I include a gallery there. So I can also transfer those year to year. I get permission from the students before I do that. <laughs> students like this. Be sure that everything is as such. And I think that's the very first step to ensure that your students are not anxious from week. The second piece of what I think is sets up a course for success for to maximize instructor presence is to use the announcements very strategically. So with announcements, how I do this, I have 15 weeks and I have at least 15 announcements. My course operates from Monday midnight. So it opens up very early in the morning and then it ends on Sunday. So all of the assignments are due on Sunday night in my course. So I keep that very consistent. So my students know right from the outset that I post an announcement on Monday morning as the new modules open. And I suggest that you do that consistently so your students know that you're there on Monday, that you're present on Monday, that you're ready to start the, this week as expected. The week one is a little bit different because it sets the tone. It's a little longer. And I also have an embedded welcome video as well in the first week announcement. I don't do the videos every single week, but I have seen instructors who use it every week and they use it in this way. The approach that I like to take with the announcements is that I like to look retrospectively. So what did we do last week? Emphasize some of the key points, connect that to the week that's upcoming. And I would highlight, so if you had assessments, if you had discussion boards where students participated, highlight a few. Because this also adds the instructor presence. You will obviously engage in discussion, work from time to time, participate, make comments here and there. 
But I think that the announcements you could use, if student A said this and student B said this, and these are the points that we want to emphasize, good job overall, be positive. And there's some overarching big size problems. The announcements could also be used to also illustrate those two. So let's say if there was a general a tendency among the students to miss the point or didn't really operationalize strategies, for instance, for a given week, and if they were a little generic in their response, this was a theme throughout, then you would use that moment to just tell them, you know, that this is what you're looking for, good example. And so, so announcements are really good because it resets and it really centers the class. And it also gives you this ability to look back, look ahead and keep students on track. I would definitely use this. So if you're operating on a similar Monday to Sunday schedule, like I do send them on Monday, Tuesday, the latest. And if you do send it on Tuesday, give a reason why apologize. It doesn't cost anything to say, I didn't really have a chance to do it yesterday, but here we are on Tuesday and I'm sending this out. And the other thing about an announcement too, is that you can also send it to the classes as a whole. So remember that when you post. By default, the announcement is just posted on and lives inside the course, but if you want to send it out, be sure you send a copy of this announcement. So many faculty forget this. So this forces the announcement to be received by email. The third focus area, I think, to maximize instructor presence is, of course, the discussion boards. I use a lot of discussion boards in my course. By default, the SPH course template has these two sections, or actually these three, I should say. I use CAFE. And my, that's a little different, but there, by default, all the courses have a general QA. And in the general QA, this is the equivalent of students raising their hand in class and they're asking a question that's very relevant to the entire class. So rather than answer emails piecemeal, this is a really good place to be, to be asking a general question. Under the general Q&A forum, this is one of the features that you could use for any forum, but really for this one because the questions will come on the weekends, they come out at night and so forth, and you want to know about them. So you're not going to be checking every hour in the course, but one way to get a notification is to subscribe. So when you subscribe to this forum, that means anybody who posts a thread, you'll be alerted to that by email. And then in your email, you can click the thread and get to the Blackboard site, although you can expect to be prompted to log in and so forth. You can also do this on the app as well. There is a Blackboard app where you can also access all your fora and so forth. So if that's a little easier, although I think you also have to log in there from time to time, it's just to ensure privacy and security of the course. So either way, the app or being notified by email and then responding to the question, this is just a way to connect to the student a little better, to have that opportunity to respond to them when they need you. This is a feature that I would recommend for you. I would not recommend subscribing to four if you have 35 students that have to respond to a particular discussion board, you're going to be inundated with messages. So if it becomes a little bit too much anywhere, you can just unsubscribe. I have in my course, a cafe. Um, I use this if in case I do have some students that are very more outgoing. So they will post here what books they're reading and so forth. This is an informal area to have a space for the students to say interesting things. It may not be related to the course per se, but I think this can add some community and instructor involvement reactions within that cafe is always welcome. I always provide this space. Is it used a lot? I wouldn't say so, but I think it's nice. I think optically it does. I think the students really do appreciate it provide that space for them. Well, for discussion boards, I use them heavily in my course. And I also, similar to the announcements, I also am very timely with them. So when I do have discussion boards that are su submitted where they do assignments on Sunday night, I will grade them on Monday and Tuesday. I think it's really important just to grade things timely. This is the, this is the thing that students really appreciate. You will see it on your course evaluations. When you're sort of all over the place, just get to them and Friday, especially when something else is due on the following Sunday, that unreliability, that inconsistency just leads to anxiety. So I would say, please, if you have something that's due on Sunday night, be sure to get to it on Monday and Tuesday. So that way they have time to prepare and focus on the upcoming assignments. In my course, I have an assignment every week, just about. So it's important. And especially for scaffolded assignments, because in my course, they work on one big communication plan and discussion boards end up being components of that plan. So it's very important to give them the feedback so they're prepared to do the following assignment and, and do well in that.
So that is essentially the three areas so far. Four is email communication. So similar to discussion boards, if you get emails, I like to follow up as soon as possible. Emails will come on weekends. I generally work when the student, you know, needs me, but I understand this is not workable for many. What I would suggest in those cases where weekends are just not open to you and you want to work on the weekend, which is fine, is to just acknowledge that you received your email and you'll get back on Monday. If it's something urgent, like they can't access a, a document, assignment is due on Sunday, be ready to address that or enhance the course at least. If you're having a problem where a document is not working and so many students depend on that document, you would have to intercede when you do or else you have a big problem by the time Sunday night comes around. I would just say if students are anxious, they they have an upcoming assignment, put yourself in their shoes and, you know, try to allay the issue as quickly as you can. I also, with email communication, if I receive them, I also use flags. I'm a big proponent of just using flags just to get to it because when you have so many students in a course, it's very easy to lose track of that email. So use your email client very strategically and use flags for that. And if you don't follow through with a communication, if you, you know, lost the email along the way, apologize, just be human about the interaction. The fifth component, and you'll see here in my course, I have a Calendly link. I'm a big fan of Calendly and I use this for everything, including I host these chat with the deans where students can sign up for an appointment with me. They can choose a, a time and day. I have 15 minute, I have 30 minute calls. So for this course, I use a 30 minute section. It's an event type you create and then the students sign up an appointment for you. It syncs with your calendar so you can set like appointments between 3 and 6 p.m., let's say, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then they have 30 minute blocks that they can sign up with you and they can also cancel. So that will come off of your calendar. It works beautifully. So I recommend that I purchased my own license and many of the faculty do, but it's so good that I think it's, it's worth it. It's not really super, super expensive. So it's pretty it's self-explanatory. But it syncs with your calendar, so Calendly will know. And of course, it links with your over your Zoom. So with this particular event type, it's associated with my Zoom account. So when they get that email, they get the Zoom link, they get all the information. And they, have, they also have the ability to also ask questions to prepare for the session as well. And then you can also add workflow with Cal. So let's say if you finished your session, you can customize the thank you emails that they get. So it really works to really just create a positive student to instructor interaction all around. I understand that the MS office also has a component called the MS booking page. I'm not really familiar with it, but a lot of the faculty use it too. In fact, they actually put it on their emails as a signature. It just makes life a lot easier. So I would recommend that you do that. Um, and also I would just say finally with appointments for in-person or virtual, whatever it is to check the syllabus to see if it's really accurate. I say I'm available four to six on Tuesdays. We don't really have walk-ins anymore. If you do have virtual office hours, to be sure that your, your Zoom link is there. They can, if you're standing by from four to six on Zoom, make sure the notification is on. There's a ding that comes on. Be sure that it works and be sure that the syllabus reflects the times that you're available. I think all of these together will ensure the success of instructor presence. They're really quite obvious. There's nothing really magical about them. It's really, you know, about empathy, putting yourself in place of the students and think about yourselves as a customer. What would you like? What are the things that are in place to allay those anxieties? So in sum, of course, interior design, make sure your course looks good. The links work, put everything up. Use announcements very strategically and consistently. Discussion boards, grade them on time. Participate, intersperse from time to time. You should not be working the hardest in this course. They should be two or three where it's most strategically it makes sense. Respond to your emails. Be very cordial in your emails. Follow up when you say you do. Apologize when you don't. And then, of course, consider automating your appointments. It makes life a lot easier. And then when I did that on my course with Calendly, I also had people sign up for and I think they're more likely just to do that without really touching base with you first. I just think it makes life easier all around. I think you're really set up for success with these five tips. 